it, it is very interesting that one thing that I realized, um, because planning for this trip, uh, I, I always had the idea, I haven't gone in a while. And so um, it, it was in the back of my mind, but no particular time seemed to work. But the yeah. time we scheduled, everything how uh, everything how how the trip happened it made me realize after the fact that it was god's idea and that was a cool uh, you know cool yeah. thing to realize yeah uh, i don't know it, it it's it was like oh my goodness i'm being led by the lord without even realizing sometimes and that is incredible <laughs> that's right i think it happens all the time i think it happens in our lives all the time i know we can yeah we should we should talk about that. So I am here with Dr. Tony. Nathan, it's good to see you. Uh, good to be friends for already so long. And and one thing that I want to say about that was very special about this trip to Cuba, which was, I think, the most incredible trip I ever had so far. <laughs> yeah. Um, is is that the way that the way that you ministered actually gave me boldness to minister and and uh, boldness to step uh, out of my comfort zone yeah. uh, and, and to do a lot of things. So I think sometimes, many times, uh, people, myself included, get intimidated by very incredible ministers. Yeah. And you were just simple. And that simplicity, I, I think, like brought out the ability, <laughs> like, you know, uh, in, uh, at the as you stepped back a little bit and giving space to everybody else, me and, and Serge or anybody else who yeah. was with us, it was, uh, uh, it, it was incredible because then I'm like, all right, I have an idea. I think it's from God. I can do it. And so yeah. and then the Holy yeah. Spirit broke out. <laughs> yeah, he did. It was awesome. It was, so we did this service and um, we went to a, a it's, it's kind of a lot, actually. We were in Cuba for a week and we were all together ministering with a team. And me and you actually went out and hit the streets and did some evangelism. And that was a lot of fun. Like, what was that like from your perspective? I, I You know, like uh, going there and we're coming around the corner and it's very like run down and, and, and poor and, and uh, that's fine. Uh, I've been in situations like that. But, you know, I kind of got a little frazzled at that situation where the where the young men were sitting in front of us the the yeah. kids and, the, yeah. and i'm like we had like five or six five or six kids or seven and they're just yeah. sitting there and we all started ministering to them what made other people gather around when we were praying because there was more people that started gathering as, as soon as we started talking to them a whole crowd kind of huddled around us to hear what we were saying yeah. And I, yeah. I could see him. I don't know if you could, but so by the time, you know, we were in, in it, it was probably like 15, 20 people that were listening to us preach. Yeah. And, and some of the kids you could see are being touched by the love of God and yeah. you're tearing in their, uh, their, they were tearing up, but you know, they were still afraid of each other uh, or, yeah. or yeah. maybe like uh, a little bit um, uh, timid. And then, you know, when we repeated, I'm like, okay, this is just to experience the Lord. And, and they were praying. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I think I want it. And kind of like yeah. a light yeah. nod. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. But yeah. but I think I think it's really cool because then we, we saw it build up, uh, praying for you. And you can talk about the different just random houses we visited of people who were open yeah. to the gospel, who the people. At the, but at the end, I really vividly remember this young gentleman that, that I was, I was, I was praying for, and he was not, you know, attending church, and and he yeah. knew the people from the church, and so yeah. I, I, I just, um, uh, I remember praying for him, and imagine my imagination. I'm just kind of imagining. This is I realized this is the way the Lord starts speaking to me. Yeah. Is yeah. I just imagine the Lord approaching that person, right? Yeah. I just imagine that, and from that I see in my imagination what I see, what I hear, and I, I speak that out. And I'm like, hey, there was situations in your life where, yeah. where you were in danger and yeah. you, were, you felt like, and then you didn't go to certain places and it w there was something that happened there that was, you were glad and you, and you felt like something held you back from that danger, danger. And I'm like, it was Jesus. He was with you. And yeah. so, and then the second thing I saw is him being kind of all alone in a room and the Lord was with him. And so... Yeah. Then I said there were situations that that you really uh, you fought all along, and then all of a sudden yeah. peace came, and that was Jesus. And he's like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that 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 that." Yeah, no, happen. I was I was watching him while you were telling him. He started to freak out. So a little bit of backstory is we were ministering to him. I think you were you were sharing Jesus to him. 
And he was totally not receptive at first. He was like, no, thanks. I'm not interested. And he kept pushing us back. And we kind of just kind of lingered there for a little bit. And all of a sudden, like you said, the Holy Spirit started giving you this word for him. And, and when you started telling him, like, I saw his face, like, he was like, whoa, like, how does this dude from America know me? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah, and the stopped. Holy Spirit started hitting him. And you saw those walls start breaking down. And it was awesome because those seeds were being sown. And he knew that God knew who he was. And then we got to minister Jesus to him. And I think it's awesome how you shared just how you hear the Lord with your imagination. And it was it was spot on. But I bet you you probably didn't feel like it was, right, when you were no, saying it? No, I, I yeah. didn't feel I didn't feel like it was. Uh, to I, I felt like it was true uh part of it and then and then uh but this is new for me because uh i although maybe previously i was stepping out more and and trying yeah. recently there was a different phase of life and i haven't been doing that so i felt like did i lose it did, did, yeah. you know I, I'm I mean, I know the Lord, yeah i know <laughs> the lord still loves me but it was wonderful yeah. to to be used by god in that way it you want to awesome. share? You want to share a little bit about uh, some of those houses we visited? Yeah, so what we we were ministering on the, on the streets, and those kids we ministered to, like we said, we kind of preached, and and then we prayed for them, both of us, to experience the presence of the Lord, and they started to get to get hit, and they were tearing up, like Tony said, and there was just awesome things happening all over as we were stopping to groups of people, and we started to go house to house as well. And one of the, the, I remember one of the ladies' house we went to, um, she had a demon. Like, this lady was possessed. And, and so, like, we're trying to, you know, preach. And at first, she was talking like she was a believer. And so we're like, oh, that's great. And then we start praying. And when we started praying, we started to hit up against that, that spirit. And it was really awesome to see because I think you picked out some things prophetically while I was praying for her. And then you, you laid your hands on her and started ministering to her. And the next thing you know, like she was shaking and you could tell like this demon was coming out and, and she was getting delivered of this, this spirit that she had. And then when it was cast out after that, she got born again and accepted Jesus, you know, and, and became a new creation. Like it was awesome. And it was in, it was just random. It was in her house. We didn't know who she was. She was like, Hey, can we talk to you about Jesus? Come on in, you know. And and I remember her little boy was there, and he was just like playing around, like just walking around us, you know. It was just so awesome, organic, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I I remember that. That was just so special. Yeah, it's 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 great when you go out as a team. I I think the Lord brings out new giftings in us when we when we kind of go together, and I think He wants to bring those people into our life, right? You know, like just yeah. like. You were brought to my life, and I, felt, yeah. I was like, "Yay!" Yeah, Lord. She, got, she got baptized in the Holy Ghost too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to say the, the first lady there, the, the you know that we came into her house. Yeah. Okay. That that was the, now. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, we did a few of them. We did a few more. And while on the way to the next one or on the way back, I can't remember if it was on the way or on the way back, but it started pouring down rain. Yeah. And we're like walking in the rain, getting soaked and just living our best life now, preaching the gospel in Cuba, man, getting soaked. Like, it was awesome. <laughs> you know, and, and it's kind of like in, in those moments, uh, time stops. And I think this is the encouragement to everybody is, is that we... If you get a chance to go on those trips, you uh, one thing that I've seen in my life is um, a lot of insecurities rise up and then the Lord deals with it in a very kind and special way by giving yeah. you, by, by pouring his spirit, his grace and his power over you. And you're like, oh my goodness, I, I, I can do this now. I know this is not me. I have yeah. nothing to be proud of, but I know it's the Lord and me trusting him. And so, and so I think uh we take that uh, uh after experiencing all of that i remember uh, just asking the lord like is this something that i'm just experiencing then or this yeah. is something that i can or will ex continue to experience and then vic just turns to me, to me we were talking and, and i kind of, i sh maybe shared this thought maybe he just picked up and he said hey this is the new normal actually yeah. you know you experience yeah. something you can keep on going with yeah 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 when you step into it a lot of times. I remember years ago, uh, Pastor Dave Roberson was our pastor, and, and we were getting ready to take a trip to Mexico. And I remember him praying for us. And while he was praying for us, he said, 
he took a step back and he said, you know, a lot of the different giftings and anointings that I have stepped into in my life have always come on me when I'm out there doing it. And it was like, all of a sudden it hits you. And then when it does, it's like it, you, you get it and then you start to flow in it. And I, I believe that happened this trip for me as well. Um, that we kind of stepped into some more with the Holy Ghost and we kind of left and it's like the new normal now. Because since that trip, like I've been going like, I'll go to Walmart and like, like I'm just looking at people and I'm getting incredibly detailed words for them. And I'm like, whoa, like wow. this is, <laughs> this is really awesome. Yeah. So when, when did that open up on this trip for you? Something new, something, a new so, level of yeah. something. So it was that service we did. I'll never forget it. Cause this is one of the most prophetic services I've ever been a part of. And so me and Tony and, and our brother Serge went out and we were all going to this church and I, you know, I had this idea that I was going to preach. I had this word I thought the Lord had given me, you know, and I'm just kind of mowing it over and kind of listening. And, but I asked Tony to open the service. So Tony goes up there and he's like, just kind of listening. I could tell he's trying to hear, hear what the Lord wants to do. And he's just like, how many of you are songwriters or poets, right? Something like that. And a few people raise their hands. And then all of a sudden he was like, is there a rapper in here? I think the Lord's telling me there's a rapper here. And, and as soon as he said that, my ears picked, like perked up and I'm like, okay, we're in the middle of Cuba right now. We're in a church with about a hundred people. We, we don't know any of them. They don't know us. And you're up there saying there's a rapper here. I'm like, okay, this is either going to be the Lord or it's not. We're about to nail it or we're totally going to miss it. And he's like, there's, there's a rapper here. And as soon as you said that, the whole church, they all look at this one guy and he's like lifting up his hand saying, I can rap. And it's like they all, but when the church was looking at him, all hundred people, they were like, oh my gosh, the Holy Ghost is doing something because he just revealed to the man on stage that there's a rapper here. And so then you're like, hey, why don't you come up and rap a song for us? And at this point, I'm starting to bounce in my spirit because I love rap music. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is going to go down now. <laughs> like, and so he goes up to the stage and starts rapping. And he's leading the whole church like in this rap song. And the whole place is bouncing. And I mean, it, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I've never witnessed this in my life. Like, I've seen people try to rap at conferences and stuff. And it, a lot of times it's, it's kind of forced. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this was so organic. And so like, he's doing this rap song. We're all bouncing. Like the joy of the Lord's breaking out. And I'm like, man, this is lit. And that's when it hit me. I'm in the middle of Cuba now with a bunch of people that I don't know with a brother of mine ministering and we're bouncing to rap music. It was such a surreal experience for the gospel. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I'm like, this is amazing. And so he gets done with it. He sits down. And then right after that, you said this, you said, if you were in this place and you did not feel joy when that moment happened, I want you to come up here. And wow. immediately three people came up. Yep. And as soon as these three people came up, one of the, the girls, she was probably about 15 or 16. She, she stepped up there and she's shaking. Her hands are trembling. And the Holy Ghost is just wrecking her already. We haven't even, you know, you haven't said anything. We haven't prayed for her. She's just getting hit by the Holy Ghost. This is all being prophetically led. And, and then instead of ministering to them right away, what you do is you called two people up there. And you said, what we're going to do now is we're going to practically walk through what it looks like to forgive. And, <laughs> and so then you, you randomly pick these two people and you're like, okay, let's just pretend that the guy on stage that, I'm, that we're going to walk through this process that his dad left him when he was eight. And you said that, and like the whole church was like, <gasps> and they're like, when well, they start talking back to you, and they're like, actually, his dad left when he was like 11 or something like that. No, he, yeah. was, he, was, he was saying he recently left. That's right, like, recently he was, left. Yeah, yes. he recently left. And I say, so do you need to forgive him? And he said, uh, do you want to forgive him? Uh, do you need to? He's like, he's, he's like this. And so he, yeah. he was like, Hey, can I not speak into the microphone? The the guy who had yeah, to yeah, yeah. and I'm like, that's totally fine. But the but the crazy thing is is, uh, I, I was just imagining different things. I'm like, okay, what should I do? And I had this note for for the previous day for for the pastoral conference that kind of uh, an uh, an example of how to lead somebody to forgive. Um, yeah. you know, and and I'm like, I think I'm gonna do that. And I'm like, wouldn't it be yeah, cool? Yeah, yeah. If the people who are up there out, it was an actual case of forgiveness that need, yeah. needed to be happened. And so it was. It was 100%. That was, that was shocking. 
and 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 what's amazing it's a lot that went with that so you're leading them how to forgive but it was kind of like hey we're gonna do this as an example but it was so prophetically spot on the the guy on the stage starts getting ministered to while you're walking him through this but while that's going on one of those three people that came up when you said if you don't feel joy that girl who's about 15 she starts getting wrecked by the holy ghost like she's starting to cry and shake and and the next thing you know you're looking at her and you're casting devil out of her and she starts manifesting like you know what i mean like she's full on manifesting demon possessed and so i go over there and lay my hand on there with you and we're like casting this devil out she hits the floor and starts like screeching and doing some weird stuff and you're like you just tell everybody don't worry about it she's getting delivered just let it happen and and she starts to get delivered and she gets free and the other two people that came up of the three that didn't have joy both of them got wrecked by the Holy Ghost and just received this encounter by the Lord. And and so at this point, the Holy Spirit's breaking out and moving, and I'm like, okay, we ain't preaching tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, And so while you're praying for the guy that you were using as an example to forgive uh-huh. and to lead him through it, the the girl that's sitting in the front row is his girlfriend, and she starts bawling while you're leading that guy in that process. And so he's up there going through this forgiveness thing, getting jacked by the Holy Ghost. This devil's coming out right here in this girl to the left of us on the floor screeching. And then the girl in the front row starts bawling. We had no idea they were connected from the stage, but they were. And so, and so she's, I call her up and say, can you come up here? I see the Lord's moving. And I start praying over her. And the next thing you know, she goes out and is just on the floor, just crying, getting washed by the Holy Ghost. And the next thing that happens is is me, you, and Serge all break out and just start ministering to the whole church, about 100 people. And almost everybody we prayed for, there was this prophetic theme of letting go and forgiving. And as we would lead people in that simple prayer, they would just break down and start bawling. A lot of them would just hit the floor shaking, mm-hmm. and the Holy Ghost was was cleaning house. And it was, it was so prophetic. It was just, and it started with your simple obedience of your imagination, where you said, "I think there's a rapper here." Which yeah, it, I mean, it's interesting that that I have these daydreams all the time. Just a daydream of something wild happening and yeah. and, and some kind of action with the Lord. Usually it has to do with the Lord. And I'm like, I wonder if the Lord can is is speaking this way. And it's just I I, I say that it's a daydream because that's the person I am. And yeah. uh and I did see it happen long time ago once and I was like, whoa, I was super excited. This was a while back. And then it was reignited uh, yeah. like with with three or four events in this Cuba trip. And I'm like, you know, if I have a daydream, I'm going to take note. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, and I, I think your simple obedience to it is what made it all all kind of open up. I think we miss simple obedience. Like, I think all of us hear, hear the Father's voice way more than we realize. We just, we aren't comfortable stepping out in, in the way he wants to use us. And it's so unique the way he was using you and the way you would see it in your imagination because it, it it bore fruit and it just kept unraveling the rest of the service. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember like 45 minutes in after we've prayed for everybody for, for forgiveness, I start seeing like x-ray visions of like people's bodies, like like stuff that's wrong with them. I start seeing a picture of this person that has cancer and I start calling it out. And it's like five, four or five times calling it out. But I know at this point, like, hey, somebody here has cancer. And the whole church is kind of looking around, like, what's going on? And this young, I'm not young, but probably a, a lady in her 30s, she comes up from the back and finally responds. And as she's walking to the front, the Holy Spirit's just hitting her. And I could tell he's healing her body. And at this point, he's breaking out and just healing. And and the gift is flowing real heavy on me. And so, and so I, we lay hands on her, and, and I believe she gets 100% healed. And the next thing you know, I'm, I, I'm calling out like somebody's back. I, you know, you have like a, a, pro, a herniated disc or something. I can't even remember all the things I was calling out. And people just kept coming up and getting ministered to by the Holy Ghost. But then I'll never forget this because then I said, somebody in your right ear that you're deaf, you're getting healed. 
Yeah. And I didn't know at the time. Let me, let me yeah. uh, interject at what happened. So I come up to this kid and he's like, yeah, my, uh, uh, the mom is standing right by him and he's maybe 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, and uh, he, he, what do you need prayer for? Oh, uh, uh, he can't hear out of the right ear. Well, yeah. it's very damaged, irreversible damage, according to because of an yeah. infection. And they've yeah. been to doctors tested and all. I'm like praying, uh, Jesus, be yeah. healed. Can you yeah. hear it? Be healed. Do you hear it? Do you hear yeah. it? Uh, no, no, no. I'm like, all right. That's all right. I'm like, yeah. all right. Now imagine Jesus coming to you and putting your hand on him. Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. and, then, and then I book it. I'm like, all right. I'm going to keep on moving yeah. on. It's just, I don't know when that happened in the service. Because yeah. you didn't hear me say, no. there's someone here with the right ear that's deaf. And I didn't see you praying for him. I, I It could have been at the same moment. I don't know. All Very I know, <laughs> yeah. All I know is that after the service, we're we're trying to eat that beautiful mango and passion fruit in the pastor's okay. house, right? How do you say it in Spanish? What is that? Mante, uh, not mantequilla, maracuya. Maracuya, yeah. And they were like, man, they brought it to you, and we were like eating that stuff. But then this mom comes with her son, that same 10, 11 year old, and they come find you, and they're like, hey, I need you to know, my son's ear just opened, and his ear oh, got totally yeah. healed. And, and opened up, and it was a creative miracle that we saw. And I think it's so incredible because a lot of that goes back to like the simple obedience of how the service opened and the way that it went, you know? And the yeah. Holy Spirit was just breaking out. Like, it was amazing. And the thing is, I was... Um... I, I I was doubting it. I was like, "Are you sure? <laughs> Are you yeah. sure?" So so then we what we did is uh, we take a video and I'm like, "All right, well, close the good ear." And yep. I, I stood uh, four feet, five the, feet. The I, doctor and then I, verified it. Doctor yeah, Tony I, I, verified it. <laughs> I, I definitely definitely tried multiple times, and I spoke in English. Uh, yeah. uh, at that, in English, and I said, "Repeat, uh, uh, repeat it conmigo," uh, and I'm like. Uh, Jesus is my Lord, and then I said something, uh, something else uh, of of the same of uh, the same essence, something yeah. you know in English, and he repeated the, those words, those yeah. English words, and and yeah. I was like, all right, I'm like, all right, I think I think this is it. I think this I think, is yeah. the first um, vivid miracle that I have seen. I mean, it's you know, incredible. I have, I have seen stuff, but but not like that. And I'm like, come on interesting all right so yeah yeah, yeah uh, that's harder to explain away with uh whatever <laughs> else that, that i usually you know because it, it's all right if we're as believers we we doubt other people's testimony but um, as long as we know that god can heal and yeah. we know you know it's it it baffles me that when i hear a story of some uh, guru healing or some new age stuff or somebody, yeah. some shaman prayed over somebody's arteries and they were checked the yeah. next day and there was no more plaques, although there were plaques, like true stories on this yeah. weird channel that, that sometimes it comes up and I'm like, oh, this is so weird. And like, and you automatically believe it because it's not familiar to yeah. you, I think. Uh, yeah. And now when the Lord heals, it's like, and why do I doubt it? Why do I doubt yeah. the Lord? <laughs> oh, no, no longer. <laughs> we saw it. Yeah, we saw yeah. it. And I mean, that service, there was a lot of people that were baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in yes. tongues. There was lots of healings. There was so much that happened. Like, it's almost impossible to track it all because we had three of us praying. There's just so much fruit, so much, so much that was working such a lot of prophetic words and and man when we we finished it was close to midnight and that place was bouncing i just there was such an energy there that was so nobody good. nobody left no one wanted to leave and then we had that beautiful fruit which was amazing <laughs> <laughs> you, you know and one the other thing i've experienced in that service is uh th there was a uh, we were being prayed for at the end and i look up oh, and you're I like god about that yeah you yeah. i'm like this guy is like something's happening, but you're either sweating or bawling or what? It's both. And I'm like, what's happening? What was happening to you at that moment? I got hit by the, so yeah, I forgot about that. So the one, the local pastor there had this like this evangelist or something that was a part of his community. And I nicknamed him Jesus Jr. Man, because this guy was like walking with the presence of the Lord. And so when we started getting people baptized in the Holy Ghost so I could move on and pray, I would ask him to come over and pray with them. 
and he would just lay his hands on them and they would get zapped. You could see them just getting zapped with like electricity and they start speaking in tongues. And then he'd find me and give me a thumbs up. Like we're getting the job done. I was like, sweet, you know? So we kind of connected there. So then the pastor asked everybody to, I mean, we asked the pastors to pray for us and he kind of asked the whole congregation to pray, but that guy came up and he, and while they're praying, he laid his hands on me. And as soon as he touched me, man, that electricity just went, wow, comes on me and starts praying for me. And as soon as he does, I get hit with this electricity. The next thing you know, like I'm having this encounter with the Holy Ghost that I haven't had on that level when someone's prayed for me and I'm like getting electrocuted. Like it was crazy. I'm crying, I'm sweating. And he's just, he's just speaking in Spanish over me and he's just saying nations 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 and i'm like ah, i'm like getting jacked man like it was and then i you're on the floor kneeling you know what i mean like we're all getting messed up you're on your knees you're like having this own experience over here and i see you looking up at me and i'm looking up down at you like laughing you know and yeah. it was such a, a highlight for that service and how it ended well, it's interesting that i'm looking at you and i was expecting something you know maybe some kind of experience and i i wasn't having one and i was okay <laughs> but when I came up to give the guy a hug who was praying for you, I yeah. felt it. I felt the energy and like um, and just this joy and and this emotional yeah. high that just came over me. Like, whoa, it's it's here. The Lord is yeah. here. Yeah. And, and it's interesting. I rarely, very, very rarely feel something upon a touch of somebody's uh you know when they're when somebody's praying for yeah. me i'm not i'm not like experiencing anything because they touched me because they laid yeah. there there was only twice in my life and this was the second time that that's amazing when somebody put their hand on me and it was like Phew, and i'm like okay this yeah. is this is different that's so good yeah and there was there was so much that happened that night and then we we did lots of different services actually there was other times we preached and ministered and then we did a whole pastor's conference with Vic Fomenko from Kingdom Movement and the team that was there. And it was just super awesome seeing all the fruit. Just lots of people were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Lots of people were healed. Um, they cast the devil out one of their services where they had to stay with her for a couple of hours until she was yeah. like black you know, black projectile vomit was coming out of her and they knew she got delivered, you know, and, and just really awesome things that we saw all week. And the team was just super encouraging to be working with because I feel like the Lord sent us there strategically and we all ministered together and then we all broke up in groups and just had so much fruit at all the different churches. And it was so fun um, getting to flow, you know, with you and the team. And, I, you know, you're the one that kind of organized the whole thing and brought it all together. So I just thank you for inviting me and, and, and allowing us to just minister together because it was, it was a, one of my highlights, you know. <laughs> oh, man, that was so wonderful. And the thing is a lot of, uh, I think, one, two, three, if I consider my four, myself, four, five, six people, they don't do these trips, trips either at all or often. You know, yeah, yeah. these kind of things and stepping out and the Lord used all the people who were, you'll say, in ministry and who yeah. were in um, just the marketplace. Uh, That's right. uh, and both, uh, we all kind of uh, uh, were supported and fed up, uh, fed, fed by each other uh, yeah. spiritually and uh, just, yeah. just wonderful. Yeah, it was so good. I look forward to to traveling with you again because i think that we have a history that's gonna move forward and we're gonna see some wild things you know we might see some witches on brooms or something flying out you know falling out of the air <laughs> oh hopefully then they get delivered and set free. come on <laughs> that, that, but yeah that. no it's so good I, I thanks for just recording this video and you know there's probably a lot more stories that we're forgetting this is our perspective too everybody else has their own perspective but this is oh, yeah. just our experience and... i would i do wonder um what was your uh were you were you there when i was doing the little uh teaching on interpretation of tongues i was i forgot about Can that you, i yeah I, w I would like to hear your perspective yeah. on what so, you see yeah. what happened because that was the most powerful experience yeah. i've ever had i forgot it's about like, that there's so much that happened yeah absolutely did not expect anything happening i mean emotionally and yeah and, and i just got covered go ahead it, totally so we um i think vic had been teaching for like 
two hours because he's like once he gets rolling man he's just like pumping out revelation it's so good and like two hours in i think he had been building everybody up on how it's not just the ministers that could prophesy it's not just the ministers that lay their hands on the sick that is for everybody um and also for the ministers in the room it's not just for us to come and pray for you y'all can hear the holy ghost too and so he was kind of building everybody up on that. And so you got up at the end and said, we're just going to do a practical example of what it looks like. And we're going to get a couple people together in a circle and we're all going to pray in tongues. And if anybody gets the interpretation, right? Am I getting this right? If anybody gets the interpretation, raise your hand. Well, and, well what, what, what we was at, at first explained, like when we pray, so if you feel an infilling or some kind of thing inside, yeah, raise your yeah. voice and pray louder. So we, we, the rest and the crowd can pray and say, Lord, what are they praying about? And then yeah, we can, yeah. we can test from each other. Is it, yeah. does it match? Yeah. Yeah. We're practicing first Corinthians 14, you know, let it be by That's two right. or three. I mean, come on, it's in the Bible. And, and so we were doing that. And while we're doing that, you get hit, and it's like with a different tongue that sounds yeah. foreign. That I've, as far as I know, that I've never heard you pray. But you start like getting hit, and the Holy Ghost is hitting you, and you're praying this tongue out. And while you're doing that, I'm pretty sure it's the lady behind me. She starts getting hit, and and she's crying and saying something. And the next thing you know, um, she starts to interpret it. And she and and two people got the same interpretation, two or three actually. Yeah. And yeah. I can't remember. It was something. What was the interpretation? It, it was so Vic was hearing the same thing when he heard her speak. He's like, "This is it," because he yeah. felt the same. But it was awake or oh, sleeper. That's uh, right. Yeah. And the, for the church to rise up, this is yeah. the time. Yeah. And yeah. and that, that scripture she she quoted it. I I I still have to sit, you know, and contemplate on it more. But it was with it's imagine. Imagine if you were reading that scripture, and, yeah. but it was God speaking it to you directly. You saw his face, and that is the feeling <laughs> I, I had inside. It. I, I am saw not you. kidding you. I yeah. was like, I was like, gonna. Be, uh, I, I I buckled over forward. I started <laughs> crying, uh, 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 just in, intensely, and I was. I I'm like. Okay, I have to stop this. <laughs> yeah, I feel, yeah. I can't. I can't stop crying. I have to compose myself, and I'm like, that's right. All right, all right guys, uh, what what is it? Don't compose oh, it. Let it flow. Just let it out. Let it go. <laughs> oh, it was yeah. powerful though, because you felt the presence of God when it happened, and then and then the lady gets up and she interprets a wake o sleeper, and everybody's being encouraged, and it was just a real awesome body movement of just everybody working together too and showing how the gifts flow and tongues and interpretation work. Yeah. And I would bet that you probably did that kind of on a, like your imagination again, right? Like this well, is something it, I it was more, it was more because right initially I will, I allow, I wanted them to speak out in tongues and the lady who started praying, like, I just all of a sudden knew she's praying about her own pain in her heart. I just yeah. knew that. I don't know yeah. how, uh, um, if you, uh, you know, those that are listening uh, to us, uh, on the web, you, if, when you go to those places, those things will happen and then you can yeah. take it back home, just like Nate described. And so I'm like, all right, let's do this, do this again. And yeah. I was like, I just started praying in tongues and that it was a new level of speaking in tongues. As yeah. you said, it was, it, it was with such authority, yeah. power and, yeah. and confidence that I've never thought is possible in speaking yeah. in tongues. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 It was awesome. <laughs> it was, it was prophetic. There was intercession and then there was interpretation. I mean, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. So and I awesome. just, I loved watching how the Lord was using you in the way it really encouraged me to think outside the box. Um, cause I heard this when we did that last service together, I heard this, there was a lot of sick people that needed to get prayed for. And I, the, the Holy Ghost told me, take a chair, put it in the middle of the room, touch it, and tell everybody else to come and touch it, and they'll get healed. Yeah. And I didn't do it. Uh, and and so that's just, it's outside of the box. You know what I mean? I've read about yeah. that stuff, but I've never done it. And so I didn't do it. And so then we ended up going the traditional route, laying hands on everybody, calling it out, seeing, you know, and people got healed anyways. But I just kind of think to wonder what would have happened if I would have took the chair, put it in the middle of the room, and said, everybody come touch it. And so when we left, I was super encouraged because I feel like 
the way the Holy Spirit was using you, it started to, to really rub off on me to think outside the box. Don't be so, because in order to get real um, prophetic, you see it all through like old revivalists that you study. They did crazy stuff at times that made no sense, but it bore a lot of fruit. And I think there's just something there that the Lord's trying to get us to step into more and, and to be brave and not, you know, most people don't, they're like, I can't hear God. They're, they're already struggling with that. Then if you think he's yeah. telling you to do something that just seems so out, like, I can't do that. You know, like Jesus spit on the ground, you know, or take a spit, put in the eyes. You know what I mean? Like, that's, wow. who's going to do that, right? But but you encouraged me to really step out that way. And I feel like the Lord's going to start using me more that way. And I'm ready for it because oh. I want to see these things. And I feel like it's not going to be, it's going to be working with him. And we have to have faith. And then we have to be willing to look like a fool. Who cares yeah. what we look like? Let's get the fruit. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. And and the thing is, if you think about, if we call it a creative miracle, then it's going to require some creativity That's right. on, the, on the Holy Spirit in our part. That's right. I, I think Jesus was so unique and creative, and we lose that to uh, to just be repetitive, to be yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, to do what worked before and. Yeah. Uh, and the Lord is calling us. The Lord is calling us to awake our yeah. imagination. <laughs> hey, no, another thing that happened is the wind. Like I made fun of preachers for years. Um, the ones that would blow, they, you know, and and because I gotten prayed for by a lot of people in the past, and they would they would blow on me, and I would get like bad breath. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like always. Oh, well, I ain't gonna, you know. But while I was there, I heard the Holy Ghost tell me in one of those meetings we did that Vic did where we were praying for everybody. And he said, I want you to start blowing the wind of heaven on everybody. And I was like, all right, you know, and I, and, and the first person I did it to boom, hit the floor shaking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like wind of heaven came through and knocked them over. And so the next thing, you know, five or six other people I'm praying for, I'm just blown. And the Holy ghost is just jacking them up. Like, and that's not something that I normally do. You know what I'm saying? It's the me outside of my, comfort zone and the way that I flow in ministry or whatever. It's just listening to the Holy Spirit, being obedient, you know? And yeah. We saw a lot of fruit because of those things. Yeah. And I think I think you can encourage anybody that watches this that you could be brave and step out and you can hear the Holy Ghost. Don't compare it because you hear God way different than me, but man, I saw the fruit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's amazing. And I feel well, like everybody's unique. And I, I think I think what we need is each other. And in this way that they, you see, I feel a lack in many areas of my life. And now that I'm thinking, now that I've the Lord have been showing me, he's like, okay, who uh, there's people in, in your around you, I want to bring you together. And so you could you could stand on their shoulders and and they can push you forward in this uh, in these other areas that I don't feel like I can be as effective evangelism you know prophetic yeah. and and so on because you know it, it, sometimes you're just stuck in building I don't know so some people focus on building a business which is a beautiful thing and can be yeah. a fuel for the gospel and then you feel like man I, I just don't have as much time to invest in this in in, in the, understanding the bible so deeply or or interceding and so you're like i'm gonna surrender it to the specialist i'm gonna leave it to nathan and the rest who are specialists <laughs> and we're just gonna specialize in our own area which is effective which sure. is effective to a degree but then there's the body that comes together and your specialty which is your prophetic gifting flowed in through me in such yeah. an incredible way it was it was your uh, your gift as a, a the prophetics you you stepped back at the right time and uh and i was flung forward by yeah. the holy spirit yeah yeah that's a good analogy that's exactly what happened back sprung forward yeah. but I, I love what you said because uh, we get that in our minds too that it, it's like oh there there comes the hot shot preacher they they know how to do this you know what I'm saying? And you're like, but I, I, you know, I'm, you're over there like, man, you're rocking people's backs with the chiropractic. You know what I'm saying? And that stuff's amazing. <laughs> like, but, but here's, here's the amazing thing. You have the exact same Holy Spirit that I have. You can hear him equally as much as me. And I would beg to say the only difference of us going into that trip was that I've been more experienced in stepping out and obeying it than you have. 
but now you're you're but now you're you're stretching yourself and obeying and you're seeing that fruit but i'm convinced that's everybody that's born again you know what i'm saying like you're a sheep you can hear his voice and i feel like we need to be more confident in how the lord wants to use us individually to minister to people and i think that your your testimony in your life and how what i saw the lord the way he used you is just an encouragement for not only me but for other people to be brave and see that you know it's it's yeah. amazing mm-hmm. yeah but but the lord we ask him that question we say jesus okay or just ask yourself the question like what do i want to grow in you know is it is it the the evangelism gift the uh, gifting of evangelism pastoral prophetic is it in a particular business sphere what do you want yeah. to grow all right lord guide me to people who do i know who who yeah. who is excelling in this and can you connect us because i think it's the lord that needs to connect the body right yeah, and so yeah. when we have that connection then their gifting and their desire will be for you and you guys can work as a team and you will glean from them and they will grow as well yeah yeah totally we need each other and it's it's a body movement that's right <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> we think this we think this you grow in the love of god when you're in your prayer time but first John says that my love's perfected in you when you love one another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, just... you, we can't do it without each other growing in love, walking in all that we need to, we need all those dots to connect. And I feel like the Lord connected us a couple of years back and it was divine and I'm really happy that it happened. And I feel like it's a beautiful future that we have, but that's oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Love it, brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that is it on my end. That's good. Thank you for your time. Um, just say a quick prayer, man, at the end of this for anybody that's watching that needs um, needs just br- more to feel more brave to really step out and yeah. pray. Well, and... I, most of the time I don't feel brave, so they're in good company, and yeah. the Lord will use them. So Jesus, thank yeah. you thank for you. your love. Yeah. Um, and right now we ask ourselves and and you who are listening ask him to tell you jesus what would you like me to know just a simple question that that comes up what what do you want me to focus on and what would you like me to know and what are some of those focuses uh, what i'm focusing that 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 needs to be swept aside for for a little bit so so right now i could hear and know what you want me to know lord Thank you for everyone who who you're guide you're guiding people together, um, connecting uh, our our weaknesses to to other people's strength, and we have strengths for them. We have something that they will be able to utilize, Lord. And thank you for you can for for what you're doing in connecting the body together, and then the every peace will grow the name of jesus amen amen thank you tony i appreciate it till next time peace love you yeah brother (laughs) awesome bye bye